Number one for me, and this is a newer topic. I don't think it was actually as big even when I had my daughter almost seven years ago, but how to prepare your home appropriately. So we Mm. know there's so much research now about toxins and things in our food and our products. And I know that they're expensive, but there are options that are available just to make a better choice, right? So like detergents, everything that's sitting on your baby's skin is seeping into the skin, especially in that newborn period. The lotions you use, the soaps you use, all of that stuff, preparing for that period better. So specifically start to look up different options for the the products you're using. Absolutely. That's going to be a game changer, especially for newborns. Their skin is so fragile and everything you're putting on and around their skin. So you have to think about what you're washing their clothes, their bedding in, what you are cleaning their bottles with. Everything that you are putting on this baby is going to be accepted differently into an immune system that doesn't have reserves and build up to fight against things too. So number one for preparing your home is definitely looking at the products you're purchasing and how you're washing them and things that you're gonna be giving your baby directly. This took a lot of research for me. It's still an ongoing journey, right? And you have to balance the cost of things as well. And there are definitely Mm. different scales of options. I love the EWG. I always talk about that. So you can look up specific products. They get a rating. So EWG is a website. You can go to EWG product search And they have done all the research for you where Mm -hmm. they will give you a rating for each product, whatever it is, type in the product specifically, and it will tell you on a scale of one to 10, how toxic it is based on the ingredients that make up that product. So for things that are not directly on the skin, I'm okay with like a five or a six. If you're putting like something directly on your newborn skin, you want to be lower on that scale. And it's a great resource because they do have a lot of products on there that you can just look up. It makes it nice and easy. My daughter has wow. really bad <laughs> eczema. Mm-hmm. So our laundry detergent is Molly Suds. It's my absolute favorite. It actually washes the clothes and it's completely non-toxic, gentle. Love it. Anything we are not sponsored Molly. by Molly Suds. I'm Sons. not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my my personal experience and then anything that doesn't have fragrance specifically so fragrance i'm like if i'm gonna make a choice between two products i'm gonna go with the one with no fragrance as a a big thing what about draft like i feel like that was like the boomer advice i got from everyone is like do you have draft like is that do you do you you really need draft slash is it okay slash what is draft Draft is like, it's like the laundry detergent that they, you know, because. Yes, you do. It's really important because, again, it's sitting on their skin, right? So especially things they're going to be in for long periods of time, like sleepers and things like that. Every single thing that touches your baby's skin, especially within those first six months, should be washed before it ever goes near them. And with something at least with no fragrance. So you can like okay. the slide makes the all clear fragrance free. That's a better financial option. Mm-hmm. It's not completely clear, but it's going to be better. Draft is going to be better. It can be irritating if you have sensitive skin, but also it's an endocrine disruptor. So mm. it's going to mess with the hormones in your body. And of course, For new babies, it's going to go directly into their skin. So it's more important for us adults. And then when you're going through like puberty and things like that, where you have these endocrine disruptors, but you just want to start off not introducing things to an immune system that's not compromised, but just not mature yet. Mm. So you don't want to put extra stress on their body before they're able to process these things. Also, like there's a lot of research with SIDS now and the air quality in the home. And it doesn't have to be some expensive filtration system. You can get those little ones that you plug in to the corner of the baby's room 
Mm-hmm. Being mindful if you live in a city, not opening the windows all the time, even when it's nice and breezy outside, like limiting that air pollution that's coming in. And that's going to help you prevent things like SIDS, which mm. is a really big deal in that time frame. So. Yes. So sudden infant death syndrome, which is very scary, and we don't exactly know what happens, but it's thought that the baby suffocates in some capacity while they're sleeping. So it usually happens during sleep in an unsafe sleep environment for a number of potential reasons. So we have a lot of things we do now to prevent that. 